guys, Jake and MJ, back again for more live reactions to Power Rangers Beast Poppers. Oh, take sunglasses, we throw them away. How is everybody doing in the chat tonight? Hi guys. Hey everybody. Um, I, I, I noticed that people were already making Gone with the Wind jokes in the, in the chat, so classy. Keeping it classy. Turn, turn her classy. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, good day, good day, Australia. Um, well, I was working on Black Friday, and Jake was insane. I I decided for for Black Friday to go to all the local stores. Um, but before I but I didn't go to buy anything. I actually bought before Black Friday on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I bought a big platter of cookies. And I just went to all the Black Friday stores and gave uh, holiday cookies to all the cashiers because they had to work on Black Friday, and that's not a nice thing for them to have to do. So my husband spent his Black Friday giving away cookies to cashiers. Yes, I'm so proud of him. That, that yeah. I spent my Black Friday resetting passwords for doctors, like usual. <laughs> Like, literally the only thing that I, I happened to buy on Black Friday was I, w I was at the mall where our local comic shop was, and while I stopped by there, I'm like, oh yeah, I have a pull list I should probably get. Yeah. So I got my, I got my variants. Was my the comic, shiny variants. Was the comic shop very crowded? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. By the time I got there, it was already past noon, so... Um, so the door buster people had gone... Yeah, yeah, I'm sure the morning was wackier. I figured it would make more sense to go a little later in the morning just because I probably wouldn't be have been able to get to the cashiers to give them cookies. Yeah, that would have been problematic. Um, some stores had, well, one or two stores had policies that apparently there was, like, uh, no food on the floor or or I couldn't bring food uh, in, in uh, open food into the store or something like that. But This is for the cashiers. Well, I, fortunately, in those cases, uh, it, I wasn't informed that until after I was moving on from the cashiers. Because uh. for each store, I did a loop around the store. Because, you know, stock oh, people, yeah. stock people of course. Um, are, are spending crazy amounts of time on all sorts of stuff, given things moving. Um, I probably spent the most time in the Walmart. because uh, It's huge. It's huge. Also, J.C. Penney's was just like J.C. Penney's and Boscov's were both like a maze because. Well, first of all, they don't have their cashiers at the they, entrance. They don't, so I had to like hunt them down to figure out where they were so I could give them cookies. <laughs> it's always so confusing whenever you're in those department stores and try to figure out where the where the uh, where the sales counters are because they're like scattered in all these little hidden places. Usually, it's fine because you know, okay, you just need to find one and then you can check out and you're good. But I was trying to find all of them, so it was like it was like a scavenger hunt to see if I could find the cashiers. Um, so yeah, that was that was what I did for Black Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I I, I, I I think that would be a fun thing for people to make like be a thing. Cookies well, for cashiers. Cookies for cashiers. It I think have should to be totally cashiers, be a thing. Of course, stock boys too. Yeah, stock it, stock people. Yeah, customer service reps, just anybody who's working on Black Friday. Um, for Thanksgiving, retail. we went to my family's house. Um, we ate turkey. It was it was yummy. Yep. Yeah, we we did we did our usual because um, uh, the uh, my family's family local. Family is local, so it's easier. Um, uh, as opposed to la as opposed to last time when I went on that trip down to Florida to see my family. So that was that was a whole family reunion thing. Yeah. Um, which was much more elaborate. This was uh, this was pretty pretty nice and, and low key. Chill. Yeah, hashtag cookies for customer service. Hashtag cookies really for cashiers. Big shrimp. Um, yeah, there was good shrimp at Thanksgiving. As uh, as sort of appetizers. Um, well done, Mac. Yeah, there we go. Cuminator uh, learned learned to cook the Thanksgiving meal. That's an undertaking. Not an undertaking we've had to undertake as of yet, personally. I did uh, work on the prep. Uh, it's, it's been a tradition for a few uh, yeah. years now that I'll go on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving yeah. and start working on the prep because we pre-cook a lot of the stuff. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, was, there was a I, lot of. I can tell they definitely did not pre cook the green bean casserole this year because no. it was delicious, but it was a little bit watery and it's always a little bit thicker when it's been reheated. So, so just to, to say hey, a quick hello. Hi, Dyrano, Keda, uh, Dustin, Vacuminator, Review Time, Chris, hey, Dustin, sure. Isabella, Rotisserie, The A Games, and everybody else who I cannot currently see at this point in the chat. <laughs> As you scroll away. Um, I think I saw Joseph in there. Yeah, Joseph is definitely our Oh, there we go. He just replied. Hi, Joseph. Um, and Rose. So, and Rose is in here, too. So, we, we got a good, good He's crew. He's here. He's here, right. So, we got a good crew going on here. Um, I wasn't sure, because I saw, like, right before I posted. Oh, Sean. Oh, Sean. Okay. Yeah, he hasn't posted in a while, but he was one of the first people who oh, did nice. it. Oh, nice. Um, I scrolled up. Yeah, I wasn't sure how, how many people we were going to have this evening because, you know, Thanksgiving weekend. And apparently, um, Ranger Liz is actually Boom. having a live stream right now as well, which I didn't realize we were going to coincide with. But I mean, we're here every Saturday, so... Yeah, Ranger Liz has been killing it with her uh, with her Ranger Week and reviews. Um, Mac, if it's his top chat on yours, you're not seeing everything. And you're going to want to switch it to live chat solid, since you're a moderator. Thank solid you. following. Um, all right, so... And that I believe that we we have a pretty good crew in actually I think even I think we have more than last week, so and it's good because things have been ramping up with uh, with beast morphers lately. Uh, I know somebody it's asked in the chat. I don't know how many are in the uh, oh, I, watching. I, I see. I've got, we were we were close to twenty for a moment there. Nice. Um, oh, Ranger Liz ended a little while ago. Okay, good to know. Um, so, 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 so she was, she was our, she was our opening act then. Bring all her people here. Oh, Dan. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, somebody asked me who, who our favorite character on Beast Morphers is so far. Nate! Uh, I think, cool, because I think actually mine is Steel, so that goes hand in hand pretty <laughs> well. Steel, Steel's just been killing it lately. He's, he's just been a great like character. Especially. No, wait, no, no. We overlooked. Obviously, obviously the best character of it's Beast Morphers. Spot. Mo Spot, yes, Spot exactly. Spot flower. Spot has just stole the entire show. But unfortunately, Spot is dead now. So, living character, Nate. Oh. Anyway, I think now seems like a pretty good time to kick off episode 19, the penultimate episode of the first season of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Target Tower. Her name is Sid, Rotisserie. Play. Here we go. Here we are taking them outside. Just this blazing rock solid. Oh. They were checking out what it was That's they were doing while under, while under the memory hat. We had no idea we were stealing those transporters for Evox. How many did he get? Three of the mega transporters. Three What's mega that? transporters. That's the stasis pod. Good. Okay, so it is only affecting Roxy, it looks like. What's happening? The pod circuitry has been overloaded. But how? So what did this do? This. <laughs> Blaze and Roxy's handiwork. So that was an they did more than just take transporters. Is she going to be okay? The pod's okay. entire life support system is damaged. If she doesn't wake up soon, we may not be able to save her. What? No, okay. there must be something more we can do. I'll try, but... That's not good. I'm not sure I can fix this. So... Get another pod! If we destroy her avatar, then she'll wake up, right? That's right. Then that's what we gotta do. Okay. Let's go. They just they just put the fast forward on having to destroy the avatar. Don't let your emotions cloud your judgment. The box is in danger. While Evox has those mega transporters, everyone in the city is in danger. You're right, computer. So we have to figure out what Evox is planning. Scout the city. Find those transporters. I wonder why they targeted just Roxy. I'm afraid he's at his dad's re-election rally. You know, I was thinking of running for office myself. <laughs> we know. We know. But robots aren't allowed. It's very unfair. No. They just like... It did, they just put him, push him off to the side and then plot. Like, look. You're only a year old at the most. Anyway. You know, there are reasons we have age limits on politicians. Yeah. What? They've got their tandem uh, morphics bikes. They really should not wear uh, binocular, binocular vision, long, scared bikes. 
Probably not. Oh, yeah, we can. Let me use the assistant from the first episode. Awesome idea, Big Sis. Yep, those stolen transporters have got to be around here somewhere. Why would they be anywhere around here? They're in the other dimension. Why wouldn't they be in the cyberverse? Oh. You can't see anything right now because. Really? Really, guys? Really? Why wasn't yeah, the better way to do this? What? Hey, those are our transporters. What? What even? Drugs! What? Oh, no, it's the it's the family luck and the family curse. What is even happening? Okay, but since it is a tandem bicycle, there's no reason that she couldn't wear those things. Yeah, well, while he was steering, that would have been the smart thing. Everything is. Hey. Also, I hate Spectrum so much, in case I haven't said that so far this video. It's taken to blinking? I don't know why it blinks now. Ah! Ah! Screaming and running! Running and screaming! She's, she's got a line. She actually had a line. Dead ran. <laughs> Dude, it's an evacuation scenario. You should be evacuating. There's nothing... Okay, okay, there you go. Help the old man. Okay, that's legit. Okay, yeah, but now he's going to get it from his dad later. There we it's go. The whole reason he's running is because he needs some more. Yeah. It's good to see the dad again. I want to know why I want to know why the mech transporters are here in a van Why? Why aren't you with the mega transporters? Why did you leave them in a van? Please. Now, now is the magic word. It, it is true. Scrazzle, he, he, he is responsible for all of their technology. Don't get out of the van. Don't get out of the van. Also, why only one person for the van? You should have a second person. Possible. You could have made it a Nate and Steel thing. Send Nate and Steel with a van, and you send the other three to make a Megazord. You're going down, Avatar. 
Let's see what happens. They have yet to manage to come anywhere close to taking an avatar down, so I don't know what they are thinking of doing that. Yeah. Oh, Power Rangers. Wow. Go, go, Power Rangers. Go. It's morphin' time. For justice we fight with beast morphin' might. Together we rise. Bow, wow, wow, wow. Go, go, Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers. Power Rangers, beast morphin'. Um, but yeah, of course, SpongeBob is a ginger. But I, I, I have some issues with the premise of this episode so far. Just like, why are the Mega Transporters in a van? Just why? Why are they in a van? Even if the van is a van full of electronics, like that doesn't make any sense. No sense made. Um. Those people just ran into a Christmas tree, and now they're going to do all sorts of... There's a lot of teleporting going on in this commercial line. Sometimes it feels like this couch is going to drive out. Sure. Like you're just going to go right through. What? Oh, it's just like you're going to go right through. Oh, it's disturbing. Okay, apparently they sell aliens now that you need to dissect in order to recover the people they have eaten, who also appear to be aliens. 18 different people you can save, but, but you won't know which one until you open an alien, so not only that, they've combined the blind box. I, I have nothing against vans. I enjoy vans. I've, I've owned multiple vans at various points in my life. Um, but I, I just don't understand why the Mega Transporters were in a van. It feels like they could have been um, teleporting Evox back to this dimension. Like, I thought that was the entire goal of the villains, and I don't know why they did not do that. That confuses me. Have we heard of Sure. Devlin is down on seeing eye to eye because either it's his eye or the worst her because she had an affair. I feel like that might be reading a little a little much into things. But it, but I I, I could, would not be surprised if she was dead. Power Rangers does that. I, I would So is Robbie's dad and both I, of Zoe's parents. I, I will admit I wouldn't be surprised if, if some of the conflict between them was due to unresolved issues regarding Devin's mother. Uh, in whatever regard that could be. Okay, Beastars is a new anime. Okay, yeah, a lot of times it takes like at least ten years for me to hurt here of an anime, unfortunately. <laughs> I've not been keeping on the pulse of things. Um... Okay, yes, they may have need they may need plenty of Morphex to transport the transporters, but here's the thing. We established that those transporters were fully loaded during last episode when Ben and Betty got teleported everywhere. We've also established that three transporters are all that's needed in order to teleport Evox, because that's all it took to get into the Cyberverse. And we also established that they were able to get the teleporters to the Cyberverse, which they did at the end of the last episode. So I don't know why they didn't teleport Evox back over into the main universe, since that is their main goal, isn't it? I'm very confused. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that the librarian was back. Did you see that, huh? Yeah. It, in that commercial for All That, the librarian is back. Lori Beth Denver. The li Actual Lori Beth Denver? I believe so. That looked like her as the librarian. That would be amazing. That's crazy. Alright, we're back. Nice. They haven't had fun with the wire work in Honestly, it, feel, it feels like a long time. Like, Beast Morphers feels like they've actually been stepping it up with the fights um, for the first time in a long time. Um, it's 
interesting. The um, it looks like the karate uh, med uh, medaloid from the um, from the Sentai, which would have been far later in the series. Oh, that's interesting. I think this is the first time they've used a monster from from late in the series. Go. 
What happened to the laser focused on the laptop? I was trying to figure out where in the heck this Daisy character came from and what happened to Mitch. What? Barbie's friends. <laughs> then take it. Just physically take it. You have it now. Take it. It's right there, in front of you. Oh, uh. Oh, man, this is awkward. Don't hate that, me. You didn't answer any of my calls or my texts. I am deeply, deeply disappointed in you. Everybody's got parental drama now. This is not. This is not the time. the young man I raised you to be. You're out until all hours. You won't find a job. You come back bruised and battered like you've been fighting. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. Oof. Dad, I... He, he comes home bruised and battered. That is something that we've never heard a parent talk about before. That part actually, like, if I was his dad and I didn't know he yeah, was our ranger, exactly. I'd be like, what are you into? Well, we've also seen him, okay, in commercial time, but we've also seen him, you know, start fights at the dojo before, so it's a, it's a legitimate concern. Yeah, what are you getting into? Are you, are you into the drugs, son? Have you joined a gang? Like, there were, there were definitely a few, a few elements that are, that are. What's so hilarious like, about Skipper? This is probably a bit shorter. Uh, but I want to know why you didn't just take that transporter. Just, just take it. It's, it's there. Just take it. Or, or you know what? You could also just destroy them if you want. That's also an option. Like, like, like just destroy them. Stop using turkey drumsticks on drums. You're destroying everything. Why is that commercial happening? Um, but yeah, guys, just you you don't you don't. It, it is better to destroy those transporters than to let Evox have them. You could have just destroyed the transport. You could have you could have uh, laser blasted the van. That was an option. It's true. You did. You did say that. Joseph said that. Oh, oh. But they should have destroyed them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Joseph. Like, there's... What? It's frustrating because the transporters are key to the conflict of the episode, but the, um... But the way that they're being used is, is, is not practical. Like, I, I do not understand why they keep leaving these transporters unattended in the regular universe. And I also don't understand why Blaze returned to the Cyberverse and then back to the transport. I don't know what's going on with these transporters. It's very weird. Start building a safer neighborhood today with That's the awkward. Ring Video doorbell. Look for Black Friday deals at Ring.com. Polly Puppy Contacts. Uh. School bus. What's inside? Oh, wow. I'll give it a surprise. Okay, you know what? Rotisserie Soup does make a good point. Um, when you damage a transporter, then yeah, it could teleport to a bunch of different places, and that could be that could be very dangerous. Very hazardous to your health. Especially if you if you were to destroy three at once, I imagine that would be yeah. more hazardous. Um, that being said, it probably would have only affected Blaze. Um, I mean, that would have probably lost the opportunity to, um... I feel like this board is probably not all that durable what with all these swappy outy options. Probably not. Um, but yeah, I feel like, uh, okay, yeah, if, we, if they teleported away Blaze and they would have, you know, lost the opportunity to potentially destroy his avatar. But that didn't seem to bother them so much in the first episode, so I'm going to go with you could have destroyed the Transformers. Um. Also, like, Commander. What? What? That guy actually has four legs. Yes. Um, yeah, he's got, like, puppetry legs that are, like, super cool. Or, or possibly a second person behind him, but I think they're puppetry legs. Um. 
but yeah, also, Commander, if, if the transport... Oh, and we're back. Transport the last season. You see, here's the thing. We're, we're working with dealing with parental disappointment. Yeah. But on the one hand, Robbie's mom is... Well, she made a very poor tactical decision to get in the first place. Okay. Not Good. Okay. Take it. Why? Wait, what? Were you shopping? Why do you have a shopping cart? Shovel! Shovel! Most powerful weapon in the universe! That, that is fair. That is a good, that is a good reason for him to have to. There we go!
Oh, what's gonna happen? Oh! He's gonna get demorphed! Yep. In front of his dad. Yep. Dun dun dun! No! Ah! Uh. Since we're talking about the family curse. Yeah, that, that was bad. Finally, the tower is ours. What's happening? No. Oh, no. Oh. No, Dad! Are they? Oh, okay. So Devin and Blaze just got teleported away with the tower. Oof. Oof. Rebuilding Scrozzle's cyber gate from these pieces is our best bet to rescue Devin. Unless oh, I love it! Departments gather in the hangar to reassemble it. Oh, that's fantastic. So that's our plan? Just charge into Evox's base? You might be able to save Devin, but, but that snake has all the more effects he could ever want. That is brilliant. As planned, we have to save Devin. Oh, I love they're going to use cyber gate. The pod! Also, what's happening to Roxy? Happening? She's waking up. She's waking up. She's waking up. Roxy. Hey. Hey. Don't try to talk. Wait, no, I, I have to. You need to listen to me carefully. What? <laughs> My mind was connected to the evil Roxy. I saw what she saw. Heard what she heard. I know what they're planning to do with the Morphex they've stolen. Straws will learn from me how to build a body for Evox. Your robot form is ready for you. Oh my. Master Evox, beginning sequence now. Well, I mean, eventually we, we, yeah, we are going to get purple Roxy, I would expect. Um, I did, I did get some chills there. Could it be that, um, that combo? I'm looking forward to seeing the, uh, seeing the finale next week. Um. She, she is heck of dehydrated. Her, well, her... Her pod was all kinds of damaged, so her life support was turned off there for a while. Yeah. Um, this, this was a mixed episode, because there was a lot of exciting stuff going on, but there was also just everything... Painfully bad tactical decisions on behalf of the commander there. Well, on she behalf knew. of everyone involved. She, I, I know, but the commander's job is to make important decisions, and an important decision that she made this time was very, very stupid. It should... At A, it should have been more than one person in the van. B, yeah. it should not have been Ravi. Yeah. Send the triple threat to go deal with the big monster, have Nate and Steele drive the van, neither of them are yeah. going to make this error. Like, even, even, even if you do send out like, um, Devin with Nate and Steel, which would make sense because they because Nate and Steel have their own Megazords. Fine, then send probably, Zoe with Robbie. Send Zoe with Robbie. So that Red and Robbie decides to go off the rails, Zoe can drive the transporters where they're supposed to go. Um, there there was not redundancy built into that system there. Um, also, just why were the transporters ever in a van? Yeah, I mean, Why? Apparently they had to hide them somewhere in this dimension, oh. and I guess they decided a van would be the best place. 
everything surrounding the transporters was just so, so heavily contrived. There was some really good drama going on there. I enjoyed Ben Betty's, um, escape. Shopping cart escape. That was she fun. Threw a banana peel and sausages, and that was all really cool as far it as was, that was That was cute. That was cute. Um, like, it, there were a lot of nice little character moments, like, the whole Ben and Betty thing was cute. Just that one off of Steel wanting to run for office was great. And they're just like, they okay. just handled that. Yep, robots perfectly. aren't allowed. So sad, that, too bad. That Let's was just move a on. perfect moment right there. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a good. Yeah, why not leave them on the rid, roof of Grid Battle Force? That's the last place they'd check. Why not leave. Hey, Jeremy. Why not leave what on the roof of, of uh, Grid Battle Force? Transporters? Yeah. What are you because that's the last place Grid Battle Force would look for their missing stuff. That's not a I bad mean, thought. I mean, they, they still managed to find them somehow, each time. Yeah, and I was only a little bit distracted. I can watch it again. Uh, it, it's all... I missed Roxy getting killed, because I was looking down. It, it was surprisingly brutal. Like, he, that is... I, th I think that might be the first time we've just seen a straight-up humanoid character getting blown up like that. Um, with, with the exception of... Um, inside the Morphex Tower? I'm not sure they could get inside the Morphex I mean, Tower. I think if they could get inside the Morphex Tower on the regular, they wouldn't have so much trouble stealing Morphex. Mm -hmm. But I will say... Um, no, I'm sorry, I, I almost forgot. Decker, Decker was, was also a brutal one. They're spooning. But he didn't take the attack... While in humanoid form, he took the attack. While in monster form. While in monster form, that's, and then turned is, to humanoid form and disintegrated. That has been um, the historical method of dealing with dual form evils that have to be destroyed. But, you must destroy them in rubber suit monster form. Yeah, watching somebody actually get hit with a blast and blown up in humanoid form. I know, form, devious. It's the that from right before never happens. the season finale. Season yeah, we've got we've got one more ep next. One more. Next week is the season finale, so that's that's they they set it up they set it up for a big one, and see what happens. This episode of Squazzle just whipping out a Giga drone like nothing helps explain the last episode how he was able to send out a Giga drone so good. Yeah, I think he just ends up laying around. The the weird thing is just that they're themed Giga drones without Robot without Robotron data to inform them, which makes it a little weird. Like the like the Vargoyle drone uh, from last week. Or the, uh, or the karate drone, or whatever it was this week. Oh, there's also a Christmas episode, but... Yes, yes. So, well, there'll be the finale, and then we get the Christmas special. Um, and then who knows, because we don't, we don't actually, we still don't know what the next season's going to be called, if it's going to have a different name or not. Yeah. Which is, which is surprising. I don't think that at any point we've actually established if there's going Power to be a different... Power Rangers Super Beast Morphers! We're pretty sure it won't be Super. We're pretty sure the Super is dead. But we don't know what it's going to be if it's not that. If it's just going to be Beast Morphers Season 2, or if it's going to have its own uh, uh, alternate name or what. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been... Pretty, pretty. We're going to some pretty crazy times. Um, I mean, we had we played up the character conflicts with uh, Devin and his dad between Robbie and his mom. Beast right here. The Frankie. Yes. He's a good one. Uh, with Devin, uh, Devin and his dad, Robbie and his mom. A couple um, people in the chat are Robbie pretty sure Roxy. they are, con are pretty sure it's just it's been confirmed as Beast Morphers season two. Has it been? That's what the chat said. It says new toy boxes for season two have revealed is just called Beast Morphers. Okay, that's fair. Um, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, the toys How would have is that. DRPR eighty nine coming. Um, I've been making slow progress. I made at least a little bit of progress this weekend, but I haven't really been available for filming. Yeah. Well, you haven't been. You haven't been feeling well. No, I've been sick. And that slowed things down, unfortunately. Um. Everybody's got conflicts. I've been insanely busy with work. I, I want to get work done on it. I do. Uh, I've been I've been getting some... I managed to get some editing done uh, over the last couple days. Beast, um, Beast mode. 
but I'm still, uh, there's still a lot of work left to do. So it's looking like, as much as I was hoping I might be able to get something out for, for Thanksgiving, it's looking like, uh, it's looking more like the holidays, uh, during the winter break, uh, which would be in a couple weeks. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can do, if I can do them, do them both. I'm gonna still try and get 89 and 90 out, but it's, it's getting tight right now. Um, yeah, that's, that's been killing me, unfortunately. Because uh, I want the series to In an interview, a worker finish. at Hasbro acknowledged that he very much disliked the super title. That That's fair. Yeah, we're all sick of super. Especially... It never uh, really played super very mega. well. Super mega, super mega, super mega, super, super mega. Super mega, super mega. Um, that's a fun super cut. <laughs> but yeah, with... With what this, um, villains would you like to see with the Super Sentai Power Rangers series? Um, huh. I want to see pollution. Pollution motif? It's been a while since we've had a good pollution That's motif. That's fair. Um, hmm. You know, one of them is made of, like, if all the monsters are made out of trash that people left behind, then yeah. people won't, you know, That's fair. leave their trash behind. I'm trying to think if there's any particular villain motif I'd like to see. Um, cause I feel like we've seen so we, we've seen like almost every Trashy type of villain spoken. that you can imagine. Yeah. What was that from? <laughs> Fraggle Rock. Okay. Um, uh, Fraggle theme villains then. Let's go with that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what, what villain theme I would like to see. Because there have been so, so many, um, over the years, um, and after, after a point, you, you've kind of run through just about everything, uh, as far as villains go, um, yeah, Dustin, this definitely does set itself apart from Beast, uh, Go Busters, because Go Busters required, uh, the smaller monster to acquire data to make the bigger one. Yes, yes. The names of which have eluded me at the moment. Um, Any ideas for the story of season two? I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. Um, we haven't had mutants in a while, says Dustin. No, that's fair. Teenage um, Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Jake looked like the Ninja like, Turtles right after the Power Rangers balloon in the Thanksgiving Day. Balloon. Yeah, that was nice. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really... In, Here's the thing, like, sorry about that, I, uh, I forgot to click, to clear off room on the SD card again, that was my bad. Um, I'm kill off Evox permanently before season two. Well, that's the question. Are we, is Evox going to get destroyed at the end of the next episode? I don't know, man. He may be, he may not be. Um, like, we, we've had this sort of running thing with the, with the last few seasons of, Sometimes the first season villain gets gets destroyed. Sometimes they don't. Um, like, generally speaking, for it's not even playing. It's paused, and it's still and still doing the blank. Yes. Yeah, like, are we sure that's even the cable box? What else would it would it be? The television. But it doesn't do that for anything but cable. Okay. Um. Because let's see. Dur for for sam for samurai, um, they yeah, kept the same villain thing. crew. But for the crew. with um, I mean it was with the source material. With Megaforce, they had a whole rotating roster of villains, but they they very much changed it up with the beginning of the new of the next season. Vrock kind of disappeared, and he was replaced by Vicar. Um, then we had Dino Charge, where Sludge disappeared. He got replaced by Heckle. Uh, and I misunderstood that for a moment, and I totally thought you said someone got replaced by the car. And then, at, with Ninja Steel, um, Galvanax got destroyed, and he got replaced by Madame Odious. So, I don't know if we're going to get a replacement villain this time around or not. Well, Hasbro does seem to be looking to take things in a slightly different direction. That's the thing, though. We've gone, we've gone both ways. Do we know that this is only going to be two seasons? Uh, as far as, uh, to, to my aware, as far as I'm aware. I mean, because what if Hasbro decides to pull a Mighty Morphin and just keep dragging on Beast Morphers? I'd be really surprised. I don't feel like there's 
enough material to, to warrant that. Yeah, I don't think we really know what we would do if we had full control of season two, Joseph. Like, we're... Oh, if, 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 okay, so if we had a choice on what, um, how this season ended and what the next season would be, oh, that could be interesting. Um, but yeah, yeah, they wrapped, they wrapped up filming for okay. Beast Morphers, so, uh, so they wouldn't, the same yeah, thing. yeah, that's, that's what I was Jags. pointing out. Um. Maybe it's Lord Draken. Honestly, what I would like to see Lord would I, be. I don't mean any particular car, I just heard the car as the car, because. Um, I, I would like to see, uh, whoever created Evox be the villain for the next season. Yeah, where did Evox, we still don't know where Evox came from. Who I would like Evox? for their, Who made Evox? I would like for Evox to have a creator that then becomes a villain for the next season. I think that would be really interesting. Kind of um, that it was announced that Beast Morphers season two would be a compilation of one-off filler episodes written by fans of the show who are all children. <laughs> hilarious. I was pissed. Um, I'd be pissed too, Rotisserie. I'd be pissed too. Anyway. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's well, obviously... Well, we know there's going to be at least one more season. Yeah. Like, I was just asking There's, there's obviously the second more. half of Beast Morphers, which does go in a, in a different direction um, compared to the first half. Although... So the first half is really the first, like, 30 episodes, and the second half is the last, like, 20 episodes. Um, and oddly enough, we got something, we got footage from the second half in this episode, which was surprising. Mm -hmm. um, there were Green and Black Rangers in the Ghostbuster movie? Yes, in the, ret in the Returns movie. Oh, and I've seen the, um, um, the Froggy Zord. I didn't realize that there were Green and Black yeah. Rangers to go with them. In, um... In Tokamei Sentai Go Busters versus Dobutsu Sentai Go Busters, where they meet their alternate universe counterparts. Their alternate universe team was more animal-based and less tech-based, and that included a Black Panther Ranger and a uh, Green Hippopotamus Ranger. Okay. Um, yeah, they, they got very little screen time. Do you think there'll be a Messiah card arc in Beast Morphers? I, I ex I'm kind of expecting... There to be an, an arc with the cards. Um, it does feel like like a logical direction to go. Um, that being said, I don't think the cards are are necessarily physically prominent enough. That they need to do cards, um, but it would be interesting if they did. Uh, if they adapted that same sort of storyline of trying to resurrect. Uh, the destroyed main villain. So it would be curious. It it, it would be interesting to see if they go that same route. Um, Season of Powerless Rangers that takes place during a zombie apocalypse. I, I want that. I want that. Um, In which case, of course, the bad guys would be zombies. Uh, that could be fun. That could be fun. That one would go really well with the bad guy thing where the bad guys are like a mummy and a vampire yeah. and like a... Um, I've got, I've got, you, you know, I'd love to see the Q-Ranger adaptation. I also have some interesting ideas for, for uh, loop ad adaptation as well. That sort of leans a little bit into the sort of um, YA dystopia themes. Go Busters v. Cinema? Yeah, that's, that's the Go Busters Returns uh, movie that we were talking about. Um, Beast Morphers does not have a roll call. It's true. Yeah, not really. Um, super, super great, great defense. defense. Be great. Uh, I, I I would have loved to do more with great defense. I, those it's one of those just not getting back. If if I just had, like, if I had like you know a team, and time and money, I would do so many things. Uh, I just don't have a team and time and money. Um, so Fox is possibly either Vengex who moved... Who moves in the, the subway, subway and took on disguise. Or the Vengex of this world made by Dr. K to escape the alphabet soup in this world, just acted upon earlier. Uh, yeah, <laughs> possible. Um, I know there's some really cool stuff going on next next season, but I don't have the context for it yet. On everything. Um, 
Yeah, we know what you mean by a roll call of history. Yeah. Uh, good night, Rose. Have a good night. Um, I don't think we've been asked this question like sixteen thousand. What, what motif would we like to see? see with Power Rangers? I mean, I want to see. I want to see a Key Ranger ad. I I think they've that they've been doing uh, a good amount of creative stuff with Sentai in the last couple of years. Um, Rear Soldier notwithstanding. Would I read a non comic um, book about Power Rangers? I'd be more likely to read a non comic book about Power Rangers than I would be to read the comic books because I still haven't read them. Yeah, it would be. It would be nice to to see some Power Rangers novels. I think that would be great. Um, I, I, I remember, uh, a few themes I came up with back when I was in, like, high school would be, like, I know that there was a more militaristic theme that I worked on with some friends. Uh, I once brainstormed a swordsman theme, but not in the same way that Reed Soldier is, more, uh, hem heavy emphasis on, uh, swordsman, different sword styles, uh, oh, like... Sword. Technique, yada, yada. My sword technique, yada, yada, yada. Well, well, like, sword technique, my sword like, technique. Like a, like a katana style technique, uh, fencing style technique, yeah, broadsword style technique, and... And then the character spent a bunch of time talking about how my technique is better than your well, technique. Well, I didn't, I didn't go with, it was, it was just purely the aesthetics uh, that I brainstormed at that point. Okay. But one of the cool things that it would have been with the Zords mm -hmm. would have been the way they combined. Mm -hmm. It would have been a... Uh, there would have been, there were, I think, three main, three Zords I had come up with. The, you know, the Knight, the Fencer, and the Samurai. And they would have combined, uh, to create three different Megazords, depending upon where, uh, what the configuration was. So that the Megazord would have the different, uh, fighting styles. Yes. So that you would have, like... Have a good night, Murutisserie. So you could have, like, a Megazord with, like... The, the big upper body would have been, like, the broadsword. You have one with, um, a little, with more of the, uh, of the almost evoking robes for the samurai. You have one that has a, one slimmer arm for the, for the fencer and sort of just those, those different configurations and different body proportions. Go for it, Liv. Uh, which would I'm not sure that that's how that works, but probably worth a try. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, if they're at all like most companies, they don't accept unsolicited material, so you would need to find, uh, you would need to find some... Like an agent or a publisher to yeah. sort of... You um, need some connections, man. Yeah, they, they, they don't tend to take, uh, unsolicited material. Um, it, it is one of those things where... You need to be in communications with someone within the company if you want them to read your material without uh, just throwing it out. Um, like those sort of things do happen. And Sometimes they don't people do, it to do be rude read things. either. A lot of the times oh, it's, they it's, throw these things away unopened legal. so that they don't have to deal with the potential legal repercussions of a similarity between your story and one that they already yeah, have in the pipes. Um, like like there's a lot of different things legally that comes into the things like submitting this nice, material. Joseph. Oh, congratulations. Shiny roly Um So yeah, get, getting back to the, the episode yeah, itself. Yeah, Nintendo character? Um, I'm not sure how I would feel about that. I think I would be kind of conflicted. I feel like I, I feel like I might be upset on behalf of the Nintendo characters. Oh, what? If, if Toei and Nintendo work together to make a uh, Nintendo-themed Sentai series? Yeah, I feel would, like depending that'd, that'd on cool. depending on how they portrayed the Nintendo characters, fun. I may or may not be offended. I'm gonna go with not. It'd be fun. Um, Slush pile. But yeah, this was an episode where. Yeah, I it, mean, it was like it would really depend on how well they adapted it. I was really frustrated with the with the manufactured drama of this episode, unfortunately, because it didn't feel like. Um, the drama involving the transporters was coming from genuine place. That was really the thing that that held this episode back in so many regards, um, <coughs> which was which was a shame. That would have been cool for X Egg. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Nintendo themes would have been fun for X Egg. Um, so uh, I would say this was a step back from from last week. Last week, I'd say was was much stronger. Um, like there was. Good stuff in this episode. Yeah, just, yeah, we did. 
it had a very shaky foundation throughout, which was a problem. We just don't watch very much anime right now. Um, so, hopefully, uh, despite having a, a shaky episode this week, um, I mean, we've set things up for, for, pretty, for a pretty big showdown for next week. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what goes down in the Cyberverse. We got, we got a captured Red Ranger... They've got a whole tower full of Anatron. Evox is getting a new body. Roxy is back. They're rebuilding the Cybergate, which I thought was brilliant. That was probably my we're biggest... We're just going to storm into Evox's... Yeah, we are. That was probably my biggest yes of the episode, was realizing they were going to rebuild the Cybergate. I mean, they left all the parts behind, so why not? I love... I love that they are acknowledging and making smart use of their own continuity. It is so refreshing after so many years of not really getting that. Um, the fact the cyber gate I mattered. That's what... Outside of its immediate purpose. It's just fantastic. That is the best thing in this episode. I still don't know what a slush pile is. Um, a PR adaptation video game series of Mario Ranger, Luigi Ranger. I think that's pretty much exactly what Chris Taylor was suggesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... The destruction of Roxy was bold. Uh, taking out her morpher was smart. Using the cybergate was smart. But everything involving the transporters was just so dumb. And at this point, I'm just kind of looping back on that. It, it, it was a real roadblock for me on this episode, unfortunately. Um, but we've made it past this roadblock. Hopefully next week we just kill it with the finale. And... See what happens with uh, with this big showdown with Evox. See what that what that leads into. What are you looking for? A slush pile is a set of unsolicited letters or manuscripts sent deliberately to a publisher or author. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that stuff doesn't tend to, to go anywhere anymore. I think that used to be more of a thing. Most agents and major publishing houses do not accept unsolicited manuscripts, and slush piles are on average usually regarded as undesirable in many literary circles due to the large number of... Yeah. Yeah, so basically that's a thing that has existed, but does not... Is it's, not it's no longer prominent. That's not really a thing that people do anymore, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like back in the day, you used to be able to send in spec scripts to Star Trek, and there was actually a chance it might get made into an episode. Yeah, but that doesn't happen doesn't anymore. Happen anymore. <laughs> It's a completely different industry now than it was, you know, 30 years ago. Um, I remember when I was a teenager working on my Star Trek spec script. I was writing one for Deep Space Nine. Um, it was complete. It was trash. I, I introduced a whole new species. It was I've, radical. I've, ri I've written Never a good... Never do that with a spec script. I've written a, a good handful of spec scripts, and I feel pretty... pretty uh, yeah, but the way spec scripts work these days is generally that... Rather than writing a spec script for a show, expecting that show to make that episode, you write it as an example to show to people from a completely other show right. that you know how to write a script. But the, I mean, the but you should you should still be writing it within the context of oh, if it was an episode that was going to be made. Absolutely, it's just yeah. that you don't write spec scripts these days expecting. Oh no, no. That you would send them to the show you're writing a spec script for. Um, They're part of your portfolio. Un, un, unless, unless you're, it's under very specific circumstances. Usually there, there are contests or um, there, there are exceptions. Open to, calls. There are exceptions to every rule, um, but you, I'll put it this way: you don't write a spec for the show you're sub, of the show you're submitting to for the show you're submitting to, unless previously agreed upon. By the people you're with the people you're submitting it to, yeah, yeah. Unless unless that you know exception has already been put in place, uh, it's like you don't audition with songs yeah. from the musical you're auditioning. For. Right. Um, there are always exceptions to every rule, but those usually involve having actually talked to somebody yeah. at the writing staff and yes. then going, "Actually, would you write one for our show?" Yeah, because um, I, I recognize that sometimes. Sometimes that happens. It, Sometimes a, a, the show is such a unique property that um, performing or submitting something from a different show might not be indicative of your ability to uh, perform with that production. Right, but um, 
well, even in those cases, a lot of the times what they'll do is, for example, let's say we're using Toei for an example. Yeah. If somebody was to be writing, we'll go with Common Rider because this is okay. probably not going to happen because Common Rider's in Japan and none of us write for right, Japanese. Right, right, right. If you were writing a Common Rider spec script, they would probably expect a Common Rider spec script for a previous season. Yeah. Or maybe you could write a Common Rider spec script and then submit it to, to uh, for, 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 to to write for Sentai. Sentai. Or yeah. something like that. Something similar. E yeah. But not. Um, you know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of little gray areas in there. But in general, in general, you don't write a show, uh, a spec of the show you're submitting for the show you're submitting. Now, if you have um, an aspiration to write a novel in a given um, property, like Power Rangers or something, yeah. what you're going to want to do is probably try and find out if they have a publishing company that they're using because Hasbro probably doesn't self-publish. They probably go through an, like, yeah. a partnership with an existing yeah. publishing company and see if that one is putting out any calls. Right, right. Because a lot of the times with things like Power Rangers or whatever, when they'll put out, when they decide to do a novel, it's not because someone sent one to them. It's because they said, we want to do a novel that's set in this part of the story. Right. That was, you know, here's the rough outline and now yeah. we need a writer for it. That happens, um, that happens a lot with... Um, like television properties that have books, yeah. is that a lot of times the people who are involved with the television properties well, I mean, have an idea of a general book they want to happen. Well, I mean, right now Power Rangers has its comic book line. And that's happening there. And that's and the way that they did it was they went to, I, I would presume, several publishers before they settled on Boom and saw what uh, those different publishers were able to provide as far as, okay, uh, we'll talk to a, to our writers, see what what ideas they come up with, and then we can see if we're on the same page. And then we have rough ideas of things they want or don't want to do yeah. for a given publication. Like right. they wanted to do what they're doing right now, they didn't want to do Power Rangers in space. Yeah, like I I imagine what I'm like I don't know all the details. Uh, I would suggest if you want to hear more details regarding the situation yeah, with how... A, it's a good podcast. Uh, yeah, the Ranger Danger podcast, they have a running, recurring segment called The Boom Room, where they interview, um, with where they've interviewed with Kyle Higgins and Ryan Parrott on episode, on issue by issue uh, for uh, of the comic. Um, and they're getting feedback and direction yeah. from the mothership. They don't get to just yeah. decide where they're going on their own. Like... What, so what I imagine the initial process was, because I, I don't think the, the original interview covered quite all of it, was um, I imagine at the time the leadership included, you know, Haim Saban, Brian Casentini, Melissa Flores, and, and um, I don't know if Jason Bischoff would have been involved in that since he was more on the product placement rather than, yeah. than the um, content development side of things. But I would imagine at the very least Haim Saban, <laughs> Brian Casentini, and Melissa Flores would have been involved in brainstorming, hey, do we want to do comics? Yeah, this could be cool. Uh, which might be a good comic company. Oh, Boom does really good stuff. Let's go talk to Boom. Hey, we're thinking about maybe doing some comics. Maybe something, you know, around, like, early Mighty Morphin time period, further fleshing out these characters, because uh, that's always been sort of the bread and butter of the company. You know, do you, you have any good writers who you think would be a good fit for this? Get a oh. good literary agent. Get in with a publisher. And then... When they come to the publisher looking for somebody, that's... Yeah, you, you, you very rarely jump straight into working with the property that you would love to work with right out the bat. You start by producing work um, and then seeing what, what you create. Uh, getting, basically getting your work out there until the point where you are an established property that then people can approach saying, hey, we're working on this. This seems like it would be a good fit like, for you. Do you have anything that would fit this? For example, I have a friend who, an online friend who is a novelist who has yeah. actually written several books. And when they started out, they had original content works best. Right. You know, they, they shop their book around different publishers. But once you have a publisher, sometimes the publisher will come to you. Yeah, and you, they're actually working right now on one of the first things that they're doing, where the the idea was brought to them by the publisher. Yeah, and one one of the things with existing IPs is that you can't really shop around your own take on an existing property. 
that's that is a problem with it. I mean, yeah. You can you the can best you can do is like if you re- here's the thing if you really have a stout a, a Power Rangers story that you want to tell, tell it. You I mean, just you just can't tell it in any official legal you, profitable sense. You can't say yeah in any profitable sense. That's yeah. I mean that's where the fanfic places come into play. I'm, I mean, people will read long fic and people will watch fanfic. Yeah, pow- Power Reviews in and of itself is a Power Rangers story that. You know, I, I'm. I've been very fortunate that I've been able to tell in the way that I have. Um, I, I'm definitely skirting around certain, uh, certain fair fair use definitions in that. It is, um, it is something that is very much an analysis of the property and. Um, you can always call it Cassie Claire of the, of the and property. strip out all the Power Rangers references and publish it as something completely different. That, that's also an option. <laughs> Um, I mean, the Mortal Instruments is a Harry Potter fanfic. <laughs> like Power Reviews is um, is, is 50 something Shades that Shades of Grey is a is a Twilight fanfic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, Power Reviews is something that leans hard into fair use because it is critique. It is also it is critique. It's education on the property. Um, it is at times satire of the property, while still simultaneously. Being something that is I a story think told Power within its universe. It's a great model for anything because you've gone and twisted everything and turned it up on side its head. It's, Most it's people a just very want to tell unique, a story. It's a very unique approach. Most people just want to tell a story, Jake. It's a very unique approach. They don't approach. necessarily want to deconstruct another story at the same time. It's a very, very unique approach. Which grid is, Defense is a better. But example. Grid Defense is one that is more dicey yeah. than. Than, uh, than Power Reviews is. Mm-hmm. Power Reviews was something where I decided this would be a good way to tell this story um, because it, it managed to mesh nicely and it is in a... It is more of a legally safe area than a full-on and fan full-on film. fan films. But historically, they haven't um, turned out too badly. I mean, Power Slash Rangers didn't do too awful either. True, true. Most fan films tend to, to do okay. But it is it is a gamble. Yeah, it's a gamble because if you make something that the people who own the IP really really hate, they will try and make it go away. Um, uh, and you know there there's other things where it's like whether or not whether you're in a good position to get ad revenue or uh, or Patreon subscribers or what have you. I um, would attempt to do fan works as any form of major, you know, income stream. If yeah. you're doing it, you're doing it for the love of it. Yeah. It's like, like we're, power, we're, we're making nickels. <laughs> power reviews is, is something where, technically speaking, we could hypothetically be making, <laughs> be making profit on it. Uh, we just Sorry, we just Olivia! Can't. We, we, we just haven't we been able to. We got set off. We have so many, so much stuff to say about this because we we worked so hard to do so many of these things. Yeah. It's like, I was I was I was starting to wrap it up because I knew you you yeah. were about ready to wrap and up. And then just said, "I'm sorry, I started a slippery slope." But then you 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 got it on on um, that. But, so uh, bringing it back to the chat here, Dustin Smith wants to know if we think it's an improvement that the Rio soldiers decided to take a break from the last Minosaur for establishing the Druidons. And Joseph, uh, you make you can make one, just don't sell it. You have to give it away for free. Yeah, it would it would need. To, yeah. There's a lot of things where it's like, if you want to make something, make it, and then tr- don't try to make money off it, is usually the thing. Um, you have to give it away unless you are 100% certain that you are in a legally safe zone. Um, you can make certain parodies, uh, get you into a safer spot. If you want um, to make a video game. But if you power. make an actual Power Rangers video game, and it's not definitively satire, then you probably can't make money off it. <laughs> uh, in which case, you would not be able to, you know, sell it as, as, as a... No, but you could something like if that. You, you can still absolutely designer, make it. You could totally use it for your portfolio. Like, fan fiction, for example, is a great way for a writer to learn their craft. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, after a while, sometimes people strip everything out and they go, Hi, I'm Cassie Clare, and I've written this entirely uh, unique and not at all plagiarized story that totally isn't a Harry Potter fan fiction. 
Who is Cassie Clare again? She wrote the Mortal Instruments, but before okay. that she also wrote a bunch of plagiarized Harry Potter fanfic, so I like to pick on her because okay. even though the Mortal Instruments itself was not plagiarized, a lot of her earlier fanfic was actually plagiarized, and I don't mean plagiarized from the properties that she was yeah. doing, I mean plagiarized from other fanfic writers. Okay. Like actually copy-pasted huge chunks of other people's fic. Yeah. Um, like Anyways, um... The, the Reese Soldier Druidon question? Oh, uh, whether whether Soldier is improved by switching things up from the Minosaur of the Week? I, I mean, they just they really just took a break for, like, the last couple episodes. And it's um, hard to tell what's improved at all, because we're still bitter over Nada. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's mostly been there. I wouldn't say they're really establishing the Druidons, or just I bringing in extra right characters. I'm looking at the screen, because um, I look this way. Yeah, they've just been bringing in, they've been bringing in extra extra characters, but they haven't really. I, I don't feel like it's really been that much development per se. Um, they do seem to be bringing Rhea Soldier in a different direction, um, by virtue of having introduced some new characters, and they were doing a little bit of focus in some different areas there, instead of their their monster of the week. Um, that being said, I'm assume they're going to go back to Monster of the Week pretty soon. Um, Rhea Soldier's been very hit or miss. It's, as we've established, it's probably been the weakest Sentai that we've watched in the last several years, uh, which has been disappointing. Um, as, as I've said numerous times before, people really like to rag on Ninja, but I feel like Rhea Soldier has been worse than Ninja. Um, that's my personal feelings on it. Uh, you can feel free to disagree on that. But, anywho, we've been, we've been trying to wrap up for the, for the last couple minutes or yeah, so. Yeah, it's we, quarter past eight. Yeah. Um. We've gone on for about an hour fifteen now. Uh, we are likely to have a major storm tomorrow and I have to drive to work. Yeah. Well, at least the storm hopefully won't hit until, uh, after you're at work. After I'm at work. Um, um it'll just be a matter of getting home tomorrow. And I don't know what that's going to mean for me in school on Monday. I don't know because that storm's supposed to stick around till Tuesday. On the one hand, it's like, I could, a snow day would be nice, but on the other hand, it's like, <coughs> It's going to set my curriculum back. <sighs> There's, it's, such a, it's such a tight school year already. All right, well, anyway. Yeah, I think. Yes, it is souring my taste on Sentai. Resol yeah, Resolver has been, uh, unfortunately. Um, like, to, to the extent where I've been up in the air on whether we want to keep up with, with the Sentai live reactions, De depending on, like, we're, we're two-thirds of the way through Ryu Soldier now. We might as well finish it. Um, and, and then... It's getting to be and then we'll see, more of a chore than something to enjoy, though. Yeah, which has been unfortunate. Yeah. Um, like, one of the big differences between... Sentai and Power Rangers when it comes to live reactions is that we get breaks on Power Rangers. Like, if Power Rangers isn't doing great, there's like a five-month break in the middle of it. If Sentai's there's not doing no great, break on Sentai. it just keeps on chugging. You got you to gotta go through 50 of those. Like, as much as people complain about Power Rangers only having 20 episodes a year, and that being one of the problems with the story... The it's like, you know what? If you're not enjoying a season, you get a break from it. <laughs> like, yeah, Ninja Steel wasn't great, but we didn't have to deal with, you know, 50 episodes of it at, in a row. <laughs> it was like, okay, we had eight episodes, we got a break. We got about 14 episodes, and we, we get got a break. break. Um, and now that we've reached the end of this live stream, yeah, we, we got, got a break. break. So I think that was a good time to wrap things up. Um, looking forward to seeing you guys for the finale next week. Yes. Um, as always, 7 p.m. Eastern time. time. Hopefully we'll... we we got to replace our yeah. spectrum with something better. Yeah. Because it's blinking. It's, re it's, yeah, it's we'll just going the blank. Yeah, we'll the cast. I'll go down the spectrum store on Tuesday yeah, and we'll, wrap this all up, all right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, so until next okay. time... <laughs> Farewell, Farewell, Ranger fans, fans and let the power, power protect, protect you. you. Left your transporters in a van down by the river. <laughs>